So this is basically your second class, right? Second class of your current affairs program. Fine. All right. So we go for the first topic today. Okay. Now here you can clearly see this is actually your UPSC question. Okay. UPSC question asked on lawyers. Okay. Similarly, there is from the current affairs point of view, something very important regarding senior advocates. Okay. So I've created a question for you. you. You tell me which statements do you think might be correct here. Okay. So the question is with reference to India, consider the following statements. Okay. A senior advocate is a designation that can be conferred by both the Supreme Court of India as well as any high court of India. Okay. Only advocates with at least 15 years of practice could become senior advocates. Okay. Which statements do you think might be correct here? One. One. Yeah. One. What about others? Fine. All right. So here, yes, this is correct. One is correct. Okay. Now, why we are focusing on this topic, senior advocates? Okay. So let us see that aspect. So now, see, this is very, very important. Something regarding decision taken by Supreme Court, right? So Supreme Court has upheld the practice of designating senior advocates that this is constitutionally valid and this differentiation that you are creating regarding advocates and senior advocates, it is not arbitrary, but it is based on certain logic. Okay. So it has upheld the constitutional validity of such designations. Okay. Now the second reason why we are covering this aspect is Supreme Court has also given certain guidelines okay, on how you should designate a senior advocate. Okay. So two major observations by Supreme Court. That is the reason we are covering the topic. Okay. So let us deal with the first news. So Supreme Court has upheld the practice of designating senior advocates and the mechanism of conferring senior advocates. It is not arbitrary or artificial or unreasonable, but it is based on standardized merit. Okay. They are recognized for their constitutional knowledge. Okay. Now section 16 of the advocates act clearly states that there are two classes of advocates. Okay. One is senior advocates and the second one is the normal advocates. Okay. Now what is the advantage of being designated as senior advocate? They have the right of pre audience over the other lawyers. Okay. So of all the cases that will be heard by the Supreme court or the high court, it is the cases of senior advocates, which get the first priority. Okay, now that is based on seniority as well as the designation. Okay, now similarly, Advocates Act also says any law lawyer enrolled with the Bar Council can practice law before any court or tribunal in the country. Okay, so it was these two provisions that were challenged before the Supreme Court and Supreme Court has negated. It has upheld the provisions of Section 16 and Section 23.5 of Advocates Act. Okay, now what is more important for you would be the new guidelines that are there. Okay, so the Supreme Court has published new guidelines for designation of senior advocates. Okay, now this is limited to the uh, advocates that are practicing in Supreme Court. Okay, so here for the designation of senior advocates, yes, it is the committee for designation of senior advocates which will give this designation okay now this committee is headed up by chief justice of india 
as chairperson two senior most judges attorney general for india is also one of the members okay and another member which is nominated by the other three okay so basically five people here this is the committee that will designate senior advocates okay they shall meet at least twice in every calendar year okay now apart from this what are the basic eligibility conditions to be recognized for this okay so first and the foremost thing is 10 years of practice should be there as an advocate okay so earlier to recognize a senior advocate uh, senior advocate he needed to have only 10 years of experience as an advocate okay but now supreme court has added one more eligibility criteria that is it could be 10 years of combined standing as an advocate or as a sessions judge okay district or sessions judge okay so his qualification should be basically that eligibility that is required for appointment of a district judge okay now because senior uh, we are dealing with only the guideline given by the supreme court so he should practice mainly in the supreme court and the minimum age has been mentioned as 45 years so the numerical component is important remember the same okay but this age limit can be relaxed also by the committee or if chief justice of india is recommending any okay so the minimum age is 45 years but this is subject to relaxation okay so please go through this that is 10 years of practice or 10 years of combined practice it can be advocate or as a district or sessions judge okay he should practice mainly in the supreme court and the age is 45 years minimum age okay now what are the restrictions certain restrictions that are imposed on a senior advocate okay so now because he has been specifically recognized by the courts for their constitutional knowledge so they are not supposed to do works which can be done by junior lawyers okay so he senior advocate is not permitted to appear without an advocate on record or any junior okay he is refrained from drafting pleadings or affidavits this all can be done by junior lawyers okay he shall not accept directly from any client any brief or instructions to appear in any court okay and the main aspect is he should maintain a decorum that is code of conduct okay so certain restrictions are there on the senior advocate please go through that aspect also okay now here there is a new term that we have seen that is advocate on record okay so who is an advocate on record so it is the person who basically files who is given the right to file cases before before the supreme court okay so that person is basically the advocate on record okay so it is basically certain lawyers who practice in supreme court and they have been trained to do so okay they give an exam and all and they are trained to file cases before the supreme court so if you have a case which has which is pending before supreme court that case has to be filed by advocate on record okay your lawyer will represent your case but filing of the case will be done by this person okay so it is a pool of lawyers whose legal practice is mostly before the supreme court okay they can appear before other courts also okay now this is the important point that you should note that is only advocate on record can file cases before the supreme court he is the only one who has been given that right okay dekho advocate simple sa aspect hai that is let's say this is your supreme court right supreme court is there there are thousands of cases that are coming to supreme court okay but all of these cases have to be in a certain format yes dinesh so that the judge in the limited time that he has is able to understand the case the nuances of the matter right so it is basically going to be a long document right because it is coming from the local courts high courts everything is there 
okay so for filing of that aspect it is done by the advocate on record okay there may be different lawyers involved here okay but they will approach advocate on record this lawyer they will approach to file their case before supreme court so that this person will see ki okay everything is in order the judge who is going to hear the case he will be able to make sense of this case okay i hope this is clear matlab that set pattern is there okay yes now what is the difference between barrister dekho simply barrister is the one who will basically lawyer who will represent you in the court whereas solicitor kya hai bahar baith ke ye kar raha hai aapke liye cases bana raha hai theek hai aapke liye affidavit bana raha hai kuch bhi matlab court related work he is doing but he is na one is representing you inside the court one is outside both are required theek hai so it is based on a british practice that is more than sufficient fine okay now why this is important here yeah, because a certain news was there regarding supreme court okay now again focus on the eligibility criteria okay so he must be enrolled with a state bar council okay he should not hold the designation of senior advocate he should at least have an experience of 4 years minimum experience of Four years must be there, and after this, one year of training is required. Okay, under advocate on record, which is approved by the Supreme Court. Okay, so one year training is there, and he must maintain an office within sixteen kilometer radius of the Supreme Court. Okay, so these are certain eligibility criteria. Please go through them. Okay. so one is senior advocate that is important the second one is advocate on record fine okay now if this is clear now we come to the next one okay now see here this one i have uh, posted in the group also okay this is a very important topic unesco topic it becomes very important okay so here you can see this is your upsc question with reference to drupad what are the statement which of the following statements are correct right so along the same lines you can expect a question on gwalior karana okay a topic which has been a favorite topic for psc exams okay so you tell me which statements do you think might be correct here okay so with reference to gwalior karana Which of these statements are correct? The Gwalior Gharana was brought into prominence by the musician Saint Tansen. Okay, the style is noted for its direct and straightforward renditions of ragas. And Gwalior Gharana emphasizes the importance of incorporating lyrical content from Marathi Natya Sangeet in its performances. One three, two three. Okay. Two only. Okay. One, two, three. Two, three, okay. Okay, so see here, yes, there can be doubt regarding first and the third statement. That I agree. Okay, that can happen. Ki, okay, you might not know. Ki, yes, if the Hansen brought this into prominence, you might also know not about this. Okay, but what about the second statement? The Gwalior Gharana style is noted for its direct and straightforward rendition of ragas. where would the examiner have changed anything here is this a straight statement 
प्लेन स्टेटमेंट नॉट प्लेन तो ऑल्टरनेटिव बताओ वॉट यू वुड है इफ यू वेर दी एग्जामिनर वॉट यू वुड है चेंज दिया ना देखो प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड दिस एस्पेक्ट यूपीएससी इफ इट इज आस्किंग यू दिस क्वेश्चन इट विल नॉट ask you regarding what the fine details of the music aspect do you understand this aspect hai na jo music wala component hai usme jitna fine tune points hai unke basis pe ek question nahi banega because you are not a musician basically to aapke liye ye question waise kyu banega are you understanding this aspect if upsc is focusing on the content yeah you can say in, this might be a point where they might have changed the aspect here also it might be there okay but yeah direct indirect itna fine tune points mein neither upsc expects you to know the same nor do you think the exam is all if you were writing an exam for let's say some music something okay getting into certain music aspect definitely then we can focus on the same but upsc may please understand music ke bare mein ekdam fine tune pe nahi jayega for example see here drupad ka question hai okay with reference to drupad now it originated and developed in rajput kingdoms during mughal period ho sakta hai change ho it is primarily a devotional and spiritual music okay isme bahut rare hai चेंज करने का चांस ओके प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड दिस एस्पेक्ट यूजर्स संस्कृत ओके एंड फ्रॉम मंत्रस या सो दैट एस्पेक्ट इज देयर आइदर यू कैन गो विथ वन टू टू थ्री दैट इज एक्सेप्टेबल नो प्रॉब्लम बट वन एंड थ्री दैट माइट बी अ प्रॉब्लम ठीक है ओके नाउ व्हाई दिस इज इंपॉर्टेंट यस बिकॉज दिस एस्पेक्ट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ठीक है so unesco declares gwalior the city of music so yes gwalior gharana it is the oldest musical gharana which flourished under the ages of raja man singh tomar okay especially during the and then during the mughal rule also it prospered okay now why this personality is important because man singh it is believed that man singh invented dhrupad in a classical genre sense okay his horizon namas they were also quite popular okay he attempted to popularize indian music therefore he replaced sanskrit songs with those of simple hindi okay now he wrote this considered to be the first treatise of music in hindi the keyword is there focus on the same okay now when we talk about gwalior gharana all the upsc questions that have been asked they have been asked regarding the initial proponents of this okay initial ustad so that is the reason we have given you the exact names that have been asked in your upsc psc exams okay nattu khan and nattan pir baksh he is considered to be the earlier ustads of gwalior gharana okay now what are the salient features here you have to focus on the salient features first is the inclusion of persian words okay second is the initial focus on family members only okay for the longest time a gharana consisted strictly of family members the music was preserved within its lineage within the family history itself okay now here khayal singing that is there it emerged from drupad under the ages of gwalior gharana okay so please note the founders the singing aspect the specific traits of the same okay so evolved under the mughal rule first flourished under man singh and then mughal rule and in mughal rule specifically it was done under akbar 
okay and the major proponent of the same is mian tansin okay now why are we focusing on this person because again your upsc question now with reference to mian tansin which one of these statement is not correct tansin was the title given to him by emperor akbar tansin composed drupads on hindu gods and goddesses tansin composed songs on his patrons tansin invented many ragas okay so this is important okay so mian tansin one of the major proponents of gwalior gharana okay so he trained under swami haridas initially he is basically a vaishnavism music he follows vaishnavism music but initially his poetry was dedicated to krishna okay now the famed uh, sufi saint uh, mohammad goes also had a huge impact on tansin okay so he invented many ragas those ragas have been mentioned here fine now what is important for you from the prelim standpoint okay so the title of tansin was given to him by raja vikramjit of gwalior okay he was a court musician of ramcharan chandra singh of reva and finally in akbar okay so akbar invited tansin to be part of his court musicians and he was a vaishnava musician and akbar finally gave the title of this title to tansin kanta bharan one of vilas okay so this is mentioned even in abul fazal's any akbari okay so all the prelim points that are there with respect to mian tansin you have to go from you have to cover the topic from here okay so abul fazal clearly mentions that out of the 36 imperial musicians 15 were from gwalior so that shows the influence of gwalior gharana okay fine now the next one yes unesco names kolikod as the city of literature so just remember this fact and what you should focus upon if this question is asked it will be based on statement 1 and statement 2 kind of question okay now statement 2 is basically on the unesco creative cities network this aspect okay what will be the answer acha what will be the answer for this one then it was brought into prominence by musician saint correct okay this is correct here the gwalior gharana actually is based on all languages it does not emphasize a particular language okay it can focus on all languages so it is it emphasizes the importance of incorporating content from marathi natya sangeet okay okay so one and two is the answer fine okay now yeah so now what is unesco creative cities network it is basically recognizing creativity okay and ensuring that it has a cultural aspect to it okay cities have a cultural aspect to it so this was created in 2004 and recently the conference was held in istanbul the next year it is in portugal okay so just go through this the most important aspect would be gwalior uh, code code you can just remember for a fact that's it now the next one okay now here you can see again this is a upsc question right ball guard technologies now similarly a question has been asked here you tell me which state which do you think might be correct okay pb not and splat technology are recently being promoted by ministry of agriculture for what cotton very good okay so here this is correct 
to tackle falling cotton production. Okay, so an important aspect, please cover the same. Okay, now here, why are we covering this? Generally, if you don't have, it is better leave it. Okay, in this kind of questions, generally, if it is, let's say, GM kind of thing is there, you can go for the same. For example, here, you could have gone for this if GM aspect is there. But if it is like this, you should specifically know. Otherwise, okay. if you can deduce something from here, from the names itself, then it is fine. Otherwise, leave it. Okay. Don't take risk. Okay. If you can eliminate two, then also you can take risk. No problem. Okay. Do eliminate kar pa tu, no problem. Okay. okay. Now, why are we focusing on that topic? See here. Now, this is again UPSC question. This is again UPSC. Both are UPSC questions. What are they focusing on? In terms of value, the largest agricultural exports by India. Okay. Again here, in terms of value, international trade is low in which of the following crops? Okay. So here recently, the Department of Commerce has come up with the new updated list on India's top agri export items. Okay. Similarly, India's top agri import items also. Okay. So based on the value of the produce, okay, in agricultural chain, which one has the largest value in terms of exports? So it is it has been it is marine products. Okay. Now what you should note here is compared to the last year, uh, April, September 22, and this year's, right? This is the new information. So in all of them, what is happening? Agriculture exports. What are we observing here? A trend. Here it is. Decreasing. Would you agree with this? Agree with this? Yes, it is on a decline. Okay. It is on a decline here. Except for two or three items. Okay. For basmati rice, it is increasing. For spices, it might be increasing. For buffalo meat, it might be increasing. Okay. Here, there are certain anomalies. Okay. Now, what we are focusing now is on this aspect. The decline of cotton. This is important. Okay. Now, why this is there? Because of uh, climate aspect is there. Okay. Because of ban by government on certain rice products. Okay. So, those are certain reasons here. But with respect to cotton, this is very important that you should note here. Okay, that is India's falling cotton production. It is a major cause of concern, especially for our textile industry. Okay, now what is the reason here? The reason is pink ball work. Okay, so here initially we had BT cotton, which was for American, which was to fight the American ball work. So it is still working against the same, but now we have a new pest that is pink ballworm. Okay, so it is taking a toll on the fiber crop. Okay, now certain aspects regarding cotton that you should know. Uh, yes, the cotton first and the foremost thing the white fluffy fiber that is used directly for your textiles. The second aspect is the cotton seed that you get from the plant, it is used for oil. Is used as oil. So, this is an important prelims fact that is cotton seed is India's third largest domestically produced vegetable oil. Okay, so third largest. Similarly, when we talk about the feed cake that is being taken and fed to livestock and poultry, this is the second biggest feed cake or meal after soybean. Okay. So, prelims factors there, please go through the same. Okay. Now, the yield of BT cotton is decreasing because of the emergence of new dominant pest that is pink ballworm. Okay. Now, it is here that the government has taken an action. Okay. So, an alternative approach to control this aspect is mating disruption technology. Okay. So, here you are creating a pheromone which is trying to attract male adults. Okay, and they are, it is not leading them to mate with females. Okay, so because of this, this two mating disruption products have been 
approved by the Central Insecticides Board and Registration Committee. Okay, that is PB, not and splat for controlling pink ballworm. Okay, so earlier conventional wisdom was spraying insecticides. So though insecticides have been mentioned, but now we are focusing on this mating disruption technology. Okay, so please go through this content. Fine. Okay, the next one. Okay, so the last week, the topic was on geography. I told you from current affairs point of view, uh, I have shown you the UPSC question also that was asked regarding the flat emergency in Sydney, which was caused due to La Nina. That question, UPSC question, I have shown you in the prelims mentorship class. Okay. So here, there are flood emergencies in Sydney every year. From 2021 onwards, every year this is happening. So what are the certain reasons? That is, La Nina is there. Indian Ocean Dipole is there and Southern Annular Mode is also there. Okay. So these are reasons why we see this phenomena. Okay. So La Nina, we have already seen. Indian Ocean Dipole also we have seen. Okay. Now, when we talk about the Southern Annular Mode here, basically it is the North-South movement okay, of winds because of which it gathers moisture and it leads to heavy rainfall in the eastern part of the Australian continent. Okay, so in the positive phase, what is happening? The southern annular mode directs moisture-filled air into eastern Australia. Okay, here there are highlands because of which it gets, uh, because of which it uh, reduces speed and there is rainfall here. Okay, so here because of the eastern highlands, it is causing a rainfall in this region. Okay. Now here, yes, so this is basically supplemented by the Indian Ocean Dipole. Okay, so this we have already seen in the negative phase, what is happening here, warming up of waters here, because of which winds that are blowing in this direction, they collect moisture from here. And because of the highlands here, they have rainfall here. Okay, and at the same time, Indian Ocean Dipole also the same aspect, warmer waters, greater convection, greater cloud formation, because of which greater rain. Okay. So a combination of factors here, La Nina, Indian Ocean Dipole, as well as Southern Annular Mode. Okay. So this is the reason why you have flood emergencies in Sydney. Fine. Okay. The next important aspect that is Bletchley's Park Declaration. Okay. So it is the world's first ever artificial intelligence safety summit. Okay. So first ever and AI. Okay. So 28 countries have signed the same declaration recognizing the dangers of AI. Okay. And in which India is also a signatory. Okay, so here they are focusing on global action to tackle the potential risks of frontier AI. Okay, whichever would be uh, threatening human civilization in general. So that is a major aspect. Okay, so it uh, the summit basically acknowledged the substantial risk from potential intentional misuse or unintended issues of control of frontier AI. Okay, so this summit it was held in. UK. Okay, so first ever AI safety summit, very important. Okay. Now here, yes, five wise alliance. Now why we are saying, see again, Bletchley is important because it was there that you had Alan Turing who was responsible for decoding the codes that were there at the Second World War time by the German troops. Okay, so he was the one who was responsible for the same. And so based after the World War, what you have is an agreement signed between Britain and USA or during the Second World War. You have an agreement signed between Britain and USA which led to the formal establishment of what? Five Eyes Alliance. Okay, 1943 it was Britain and USA. 
finally canada joined it and new zealand and australia also joined at a later stage in 1956 to form this alliance okay so five eyes alliance it is also there in news because of the canada assassination that happened in canada okay so it is an intelligent sharing alliance of united states united kingdom australia canada and new zealand the alliance dates back to the second world war okay, so certain facts just go through the same right okay next okay now this is important african union with reference to african union consider the following statements okay you tell me which statements do you think might be correct here the african union was founded as a successor to the organization of african unity the african union has shifted its focus from liberation to political and economic integration Okay. Okay. Yes, so let us see here. why we are focusing on the same okay so this is an important topic you should cover the same right so african union was admitted as a new member of the g20 okay and india led initiative so this becomes important okay so when we talk about african union it is an intergovernmental organization of 55 member states okay it was launched in 2002 in durban and is the successor of organization of african unity okay so organization of african unity this was basically formed to fight against the colonial powers okay uh, to get independence from the same okay but it was not able to after getting independence it was it was not able to integrate the states that is the reason in 2002 you see a new group that was formed that is african union okay so this uh, african union was established after the sirte declaration this is important okay so the secretariat it is in addis ababa and and the establishment of african continental free trade area this is a major achievement of the african union okay so in upsc previous year questions you might have seen right the, it is successor of okay so this aspect is important the statements have been asked okay now when we talk about african union versus organization of african unity yes it is basically their objectives are di different because they were set up in different time periods okay so the main focus here is to liberate the colonized countries in the continent whereas when we talk about african union they are focusing more on achieving greater unity and solidarity between african nation okay focus is on political and socio economic integration okay so please go through this an important topic an india led initiative it becomes important okay all right the next one okay so the next aspect is regarding an invasive species okay an invasive species which was recently banned by the gujarat government okay so here you can see this is again a upsc question no why is a plant called prosopis julofora okay mentioned in news okay It tends to reduce biodiversity okay so invasive species are an important point an important point from which upsc has asked questions okay so here you have another set of trees that is conocarpus trees 
which have been recently banned by Gujarat. And last year it was Telangana government which banned their use. Okay. So why has it spread on such a large scale? Because of the greenery efforts by the state governments. Okay. These type of trees are the least, they take the least effort to manage. Okay. That is why they are put on the urban landscape and then it is found out that they are basically harming the native species. Okay. So two species have been mentioned here. Please go through them. Okay. So there are other invasive species also in India, which are of major problems right now. So eucalyptus is there. This already has been asked in your UPSC, Julifora. Okay. And then recently it is Lanta Camara. This is something that you observe. This is in national parks a lot. Okay, an invasive species which is threatening the viability of national parks. Okay, so that is the reason this invasive plant also you should remember. Okay, now these kind of trees they pose a, uh, health concerns also. Okay, so there are many allergies also associated with the same. So please go through them. Fine. Exactly. Okay. So there are many issues with plant, with diet. Okay. So that is the reason that is an invasive species. Fine. All right. The next one is Kupin Gabon. Okay. So whenever there is, we have discussed this in the first class, climate change, conflict. Okay. So conflict is there. It is important, especially in the African continent. Okay. So Kupin Gabon. So here, yes, rebel officers have seized power. What you should focus upon is it is dependent upon oil production. This economy is dependent upon oil production. So definitely the one of the primary reasons why there is issues there. Okay, there are, it is also known for its strategic minerals that is manganese and iron ore. Okay, so this country is located in Central Africa, bordered by Atlantic Ocean. Okay, so COOP is there. Direct straightforward questions are asked from this. Okay. All right. The next one. Okay, now see here. This kind of question also you can see. Both are actually UPSC question. Okay, this is also a UPSC question. This is also a UPSC question. Okay. So when we talk about any connectivity, we have discussed this. Anything regarding connectivity, it becomes important. Right, so here you can see which one of the following countries is planning to construct a rival to the Panama Canal. Okay, similarly here also you can see between India and East Asia, the navigation time can be reduced by which of the following. Okay, so do you know what the answer is here, by the way? Deepening the Malacca Straits between Malaysia and Indonesia and opening a new canal. Across the Krasmus. This is a UPSC question. How can you reduce the distance? One, two, two. Okay. Yeah. So this is the answer is two. Okay. So this is actually a UPSC question itself. Okay. Yeah. Now, why are we covering this aspect? Because again, this is a topic that we has happened for many years. That is, there is increased proposal from Thailand to create an isthmus of Kra land bridge. Okay, so earlier what was proposed is basically creating a canal like the Suez Canal. Okay, but now we have observed. Okay, so here you can see earlier what was proposed is there had to be a canal which will connect the same. Okay, but now uh, it has been found that it is unviable and it will be uh, having effect on the biodiversity also. Okay, so now what the government is 
talking about is creating a land bridge. Okay, so here it will connect these two ports directly through rail or land. Okay, through road connectivity as well as railway connectivity. So the two ports that are there, which are proposed to be connected, you should go through the same. Okay, so what is the purpose here? Basically, you want to reduce the dependence on Strait of Malacca. Okay, so it is a 90 kilometer land bridge, which is expected to comprise of road and rail networks to transport goods. Okay, so earlier it was supposed to be a canal, but it has been now it is China backed economic corridor connecting a land bridge. Okay, now it will run parallel to this river, Kramburi River. So this marks the boundary between Myanmar and Thailand. So please go through this again. Already UPSC questions have been asked on the topic. Okay. Now, another aspect is the connectivity, especially when we talk about Northeast. Okay. In 2023 also, we have seen international connectivity projects have been asked. BCIM question. Okay. So similarly, here you have Agartala Akora project here, okay, which is trying to connect two basic regions that is connecting Tripura and Bangladesh. Okay, so important cities, please go through the same. Okay, so the train will start. So it is also again focusing on a rail connectivity. Okay, so this has been launched. Please go through this as well. Fine. Okay, now we come to the most important topic that you should definitely focus on. That is the possession of wildlife articles. Okay. Now, based on it, based on recent news, there has been a, I have created a question here. You tell me which statements do you think might be correct? Okay, this is a very, very important topic. Okay. Consider the following statements regarding possession of wildlife articles as per the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. Okay. So possession of wildlife articles derived from animals listed under Schedule 1 without an ownership certificate is a bailable offense. Okay. An individual can legally possess a wildlife article if they have inherited it from their blood relative even without an ownership certificate what do you think two only neither both wrong two only None, okay. So two can be there, none is there. Fine. None, okay. What about other? Okay, two only. Okay, let's see here. Uh, okay, let's see the try to answer this question through the slide. Okay, through the slides. Now, see here, uh, yeah, bohot, bohot important. Hai, okay, this is very, very, very important. Okay. So what is the news? So recently a reality TV star was arrested for wearing tiger claw. Okay, so that news is of no importance for us. But what is important for us is the static aspect. 
Okay, can you actually possess the have wildlife articles under your possession? Okay, so here under the Wildlife Protection Act, killing wild wild animals. Okay, or and selling or possessing animal articles, it is considered as a criminal offense. Okay, now what is a wildlife artifact? It is basically anything which is made of a part or whole of a wildlife wild animal, okay, which is protected under the Wildlife Protection Act. Okay, so if you are keeping any artifact as an article or as a trophy, both are considered as a criminal offense. Okay, so what is the importance? Okay, so ownership certificate is something which is very, very important here. So why we are talking about ownership certificate? So there might be certain persons who have these kind of artifacts, which to which have which have these artifact artifacts before 1972. Okay, so the state recognizes that hunting was part of uh, the British India. Okay, so that is the reason the government is giving ownership certificates okay so anybody who is in possession of these materials but without an ownership certificate he is the one who is violating the provisions of wildlife protection act if you have ownership certificate there is no problem but if you don't then you have to report the same to the chief wildlife warden of your state okay now here also when we talk about ownership certificate it does not grant one absolute ownership of the artifact, but only provides custodianship of the same. Okay. Just because you are the owner and this you have the ownership certificate, it does not mean that you can, as an owner, you can you have the right to sell your product. Okay, that cannot happen. Okay, you are only supposed to own it, and there also there are certain limitations. Okay, so let us see that. Okay. So what constitutes legal possession of a wildlife article? Okay. So if the person had custody of the article, it could be a claw. Okay. It could be teeth of the animal. Okay. Uh, it could be skin of the animal. Okay. So if the person had custody of the article before the enactment of the wildlife act. Okay. If the person declared the article during the moratorium given by various state governments. Okay. If the person inherited the article from the blood relative or spouse. Okay. So there are only three scenarios where you can legally possess a wildlife article. But even then, in all the three scenarios, ownership certificate is mandatory. Okay. So here you can inherit wildlife article only through three aspects okay you had it before 1972 you declared your article before the state government okay and the third is you inherited from your forefathers okay now anything else even if somebody gives the article to you it is considered as a violation and a criminal offense okay now, is gifting wildlife articles with ownership certificates legal? Okay. So, as you have seen here, an ownership certificate does not give one the right to gift, buy, or sell a wildlife article. Okay. You can you are only the custodian. Okay. So, you cannot accept gifts also. That is wildlife article. Okay. Now, the term inheritance also carries a lot of significance here. That is a husband who has an article, okay, and has an ownership certificate also, he cannot gift it to his wife. Okay, only after his death can that inheritance be passed. Okay, so this is also an important aspect. Okay, so when we talk about inheritance, first a person gets the inheritance and then after his death, the second person gets the same. Okay, and in the meantime, Neither of them can sell their this article. Okay, they cannot gift, they cannot buy or sell the article. Okay, now who issues the ownership certificate? So the ownership certificate is issued by the chief wildlife warden of each state. Okay, so each article is marked and has a serial number. 
Okay. Now the transportation of the article also requires permission from the chief wildlife warden of the state. Okay. Now, how serious a crime is illegal possession of wildlife article? So it is a non bailable cognizable offense. Okay, so here a violator can be arrested. It is because of which the reality TV star was also arrested. Okay, so here the bail can be given only by a magistrate. Okay, so if anyone comes in possession of such an artifact, they are uh, required to inform the authorized officer within 48 hours of possession. Okay, so please go through the same. Okay, so what are the important aspects that we discussed here? Let us just revise very fast regarding wildlife articles. First is, it's a criminal offense. Okay, it's considered a criminal offense. What ownership certificate is? Yes, ownership certificate is? Yes, it is mandatory. Okay, in all scenarios, it is mandatory. Okay. You cannot gift, you cannot transfer. Okay. You cannot send. What else comes to mind? Uh, only death of a person can in a yes, exactly. Fine. Yes, Chief Wildlife Warden is there. Okay, he is the one who is responsible. Can issue the ownership certificate. Very good. It's a non-bailable offense, also. Okay. Fine. So here now, based on this. What do you think which statements might be wrong? What about the first one anyways is wrong? It is not bailable. What about the second one? An individual can legally possess a wildlife article even without an ownership certificate. It would be wrong. Okay, so both are wrong statements. Okay, so this is a very, very important topic. Please cover this topic. Fine. Okay, the next one. The next one is regarding the rules that have been changed regarding foreign contribution, that is FCRA rules. Okay, so the Ministry of Home Affairs has amended the FCRA rules. Now, what it has said is the NGOs now will have to submit details of all the assets that they have created due to these contributions by receiving this foreign contributions. Okay, so this is a new uh, rule that has been brought forward. So earlier, they just had to show the income. You only had to show uh, the income. Now it is all the assets that you are buying. Okay, so mandatory declaration has to be done by NGOs every financial year. Okay, so this is the new rule. Okay, now the rest are all historical facts that is yes this fcra that is there it was enacted during the indira gandhi's time that is emergency the law mandates that all ngos should re register themselves under the fcra okay so if you are seeking the uh, donation you can do so only from certain bank that is state bank of india okay so fcra also every person or ngo seeking foreign donations who are registered under the act, they have to open a bank account in the State Bank of India. Okay, so earlier it was only income. Now also the assets that you are buying, you have to declare every year. Okay, movable as well as immovable assets. Okay, now the new rules have also, this is earlier, the rules also reduce the use of foreign funds. That is, if you are receiving 100 rupees, the administrative cost by NGOs can be only 20 rupees. You can only take 20 rupees out of it. Okay, for administrative cost. Okay, the rest 80 should be used for the purpose in which it for which it was raised. Okay, so these are certain rules that have been mentioned. Okay. 
so go through that now the next one ab ye again this is another very very important topic okay so recently regarding the recent okay recently india authorized its first indigenous cart t cell therapy okay so this becomes very 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 important okay so here you can see this also this is a upsc question already asked okay so read the statements take a guess which statement do you think might be correct here okay it is india's first indigenously developed cell therapy 1 3 Two, three. Okay. What about others? Two, three. One, three. All, all. Acha. See ya. Uh. Okay, you tell me this logic. if india is developing a technology and that too especially in the field of medicine okay do you think india will develop a technology if it is not cost effective would that ever happen when we are sending people to space also and in a cost effective manner would you say if we are developing a new technology it will not be cost effective or at least the inventors that are there they will not have this in their mindset are you understanding the logic i am saying theek hai ek indigenously developed technology would always especially in india when we are talking about in india है ना दे विल थिंक दे विल ऑलवेज कीप इन माइंड ठीक है वो हमेशा दिमाग में रहेगा कि वी आर मेकिंग दिस फॉर दी पीपल ऑफ इंडिया इट हैज टू बी कॉस्ट इफेक्टिव है ना हमारा अभी जो मेडिकल इंडस्ट्री है इट इज नॉट एट पार विथ यूएस और समथिंग वेर हियर ऑल्सो द प्राइज इज राइट हियर ऑल्सो दैट इज द बेसिक रीजन वाई वी हैव मेडिकल टूरिज्म okay so there is no reason why you should eliminate statement 2 okay the rest okay ho sakta hai koi doubt ho aapko but statement 2 i am talking about statement 2 the reason for eliminating statement 2 is not there theek hai baki knowledge ka farak ho sakta hai usme problem nahi hai theek hai now see here what is the statement say uh, statement 1 saying it is a type of immunotherapy that genetically modifies a patient's beta cells okay the name itself suggest it is what t cell therapy okay so beta cell that is wrong okay so india is one of the first developing country one of the ho sakta hai kya kya problem is okay so that is correct okay so the answer is Fine. Okay, now this is very very important. Okay, you have to definitely focus on the same. Yes, हो सकता है. What is the problem, Sakshi? Okay, आप normal therapy कर रहे हैं gene therapy, right? Whenever you do gene therapy, 
it is what you are modifying the same okay you are modifying whatever is the component you are using vectors for the same okay so here yes what is the news component here so the central drug standard control organization has granted market authorization for next car 19 okay so it is india's first indigenously developed car t cell therapy okay so to which company it has given the same immuno act a company incubated by iit bombay okay so this is something that a medical aspect has been recently in 2021 it was asked 22 it was asked 23 it was asked okay all related to vaccines technology medical innovations okay so this becomes important okay so this paves the way for commercial launch of this therapy in india okay and it is expected to be available to cancer patients at a tenth of the cost abroad okay so what is the aspect here it basically takes t cells it modifies the same okay and it converts them into cancer fighting agents that is the basic premise okay so it is a revolutionary therapy that modifies immune cells that is especially t cells by turning them into potent cancer fighters known as car t cells okay now these supercharged t cells they are put back into the body and go after cancer cells okay so they are basically relevant for blood cancers okay now how is it designed okay so this next car 19 therapy it is designed to target cancer cells that carry the cd19 protein so this is the basic receptor okay so this protein acts as a flag on cancer cells and it allows the t cells to recognize the cancer cells also okay so india is one of the few in one of the first developing countries to have its own indigenous car t and gene therapy platform okay so this will help in reducing the cancers okay so therapy is basically for people with beta cell lymphomas who do not respond to standard treatments like chemotherapy okay if chemotherapy is not working if you are relapsing or there is recurrence of cancer in all these scenarios what happens is you go for t cell therapy okay now what is the aspect of the same here it has been found that the recovery typically occurs within two weeks that is within 15 days of treatment the patients have been found that they have recovered okay so what is the process here first and the foremost thing is from the patient blood is drawn from the patient okay here the t cells are separated now these t cells they are reprogrammed through the gene therapy okay now this car t cell it is again recognized and it is put back into the body okay so here it is first treated it is then reproduced and it is then reintroduced into the patient okay so car t cells that are there they are administered back into the patients and they directly ta target the cancer cells okay now what is the advantage of this technology that we have currently okay so india's indigenous car t cell therapy it has been found that it has significantly lower drug related toxicities okay in developed countries also this technology is there but there have been reports of damage to neurons okay whereas in the current indigenous technology that has been developed by india here there is lower significantly lower drug related toxicities after the project okay so it causes minimal damage to neurons and the central nervous system okay so there is also minimal inflammation or hyperinflammation in the body okay so here faster recovery as well as the side effects are also significantly lower in the indigenous technology i hope this is clear okay so this is a very very important topic you should definitely cover this 
if you get uh, extra content on the same you should read on the topics also okay this it's very very important if i find any extra content i will post it in the group okay so here you can clearly see it modifies not the beta cells but the t cells okay and here the rest we have discussed fine all right acha so with that we basically end the class for today okay so today is what are the important topics that you will focus upon one is car t cell therapy that is very very important okay the next one is wildlife articles okay that is also very very important okay the invasive species that are that was there okay apart from it what else the african union that is very important india led initiative yes gwalior gharana that is important okay what else that is senior advocate that is there senior advocate is important yes gabon theek hai wo aa sakta hai nahi aa sakta hai but you should keep that is ai summit also okay ai summit very important ai summit held in uk okay anything else i think we have covered everything na so please go through these topics they are important agar tarah rail link if it is asked it will be a summation of two three you know two three statements will be there combined uh, in a single statement it will not be there. okay yes kra is also there yes very good kra is also an important topic theek okay. hai all right so please go through these topics okay now the next week in the next week you will not have a current affairs class okay the next week current affairs class will not be there on account of diwali okay so uh, that is the reason it will not be there okay the day after this we will the uh, day after the next week we will cover the next class fine all right so with that we end the class if you have any doubt you can stay back the rest of you can leave okay the class for today is over